Early 19th century. The newly proclaimed French Empire, led by Napoleon, is rapidly gaining strength. In turn, the British Empire, in order to prevent the strengthening of France, announced a blockade of European ports located on the coast from the Elba to Brest. Napoleon responded to this step by launching a continental blockade, according to which not a single ship that called at British ports could visit French ports under threat of confiscation of both goods and the ship itself. Due to the fact that, in addition to France, Italy, Holland, Spain and Denmark joined the continental blockade, and after the treaties of Tilsit, Russia, Prussia and Austria, the British Empire found itself in a rather difficult situation. A massive trade war broke out between Britain and France, experiencing serious problems after the conduct of the continental connection of the blockade, Britain does its best to suppress the trade war, including with the United States. Under the pretext of searching for deserting English sailors, the British fleet began to seize American ships. Of course, this situation did not suit not only France but also the United States, therefore, after the next elections, the majority in the American Congress was won by supporters of the war, the main goal of which was not only to stop the seizure of American ships by English ships, but to expand the territory of the United States at the expense of the Canadian possessions of the British Empire. On June 18, 1812, war was declared on the British Empire after James Madison became the new President of the United States. By the time the hostilities began, the Governor-General of Canada had only 4.5 thousand soldiers at his disposal, so he decided to enlist the support of the Confederation of Indian Tribes, which was headed by the leader Tecumseh. As for the U.S. Army, despite the fact that half a year before the declaration of war on the British Empire, Congress passed a law to increase the army to 35,000 soldiers, the actual number of American soldiers ready to go into battle was less than 7,000. It is for this reason that the United States also decided to use the help of Indian tribes, led by General Pashmataha. Almost immediately after the declaration of war, the British squadron, consisting of five ships, began a blockade of the American coast. In turn, the U.S. authorities, as part of the war at sea, relied on privateers, who during the fighting managed to capture about 200 British merchant ships. If at sea the advantage was with the British Empire, which at that time proudly bore the title of Queen of the Seas, then the United States had a significant numerical advantage. It is for this reason that the Americans, having divided their forces, began preparations for an offensive campaign. According to the plan drawn up, the main American army was to begin moving from Lake Champlain towards Montreal. While three additional columns were to invade Canada at Detroit, Sackett's Harbor and Niagara. Unfortunately, the plan did not contain the exact time and date of the start of the movement of individual parts of the army, so it was not possible to carry out a simultaneous attack on all the planned directions. The fighting began on July 12, 1812, when an American column of 1,600 soldiers under the command of William Hull crossed the Detroit River and forced the British militia guarding the crossings to hastily retreat across the Kennard River. Thus, the Americans managed to take the city of Sandwich without firing a single shot. Fearing high losses, Hull hesitated to attack the nearby British Fort Malden, which was garrisoned by 500 soldiers. However, the Fort Garrison also did not try to attack the American detachment. While Hull was inactive, the garrison of Fort Malden received reinforcements, and the British began active operations. The British detachment, together with Allied Indian warriors, invaded the United States and captured Fort Mackinac and began moving towards Detroit. In this situation, Hull was forced to retreat and send his troops to the vicinity of Fort Detroit. The fort itself was well fortified, which made it possible to defend it for quite some time, but the British detachments under the command of General Brock cut off the supply lines, which put the Americans in a rather difficult position. On the night of August 15, British detachments of about 1,300 soldiers crossed the river and began to lay siege to the fort. Despite the fact that General Hull had more than 2,000 soldiers at his disposal, he understood that he would not withstand a long siege due to problems with the delivery of food. Therefore, on August 16, the American garrison capitulated. At the same time, a detachment of Indians who fought on the side of the British managed to capture Fort Dearborn, 
because of which the American army lost its positions on the Western Lakes. On the night of October 13, an American detachment of about 3.5 thousand soldiers under the command of Van Rensselaer invaded enemy territory and occupied the heights near Queenston, planning to continue the attack and take the city. Meanwhile, the British managed to concentrate about 1,300 soldiers in the vicinity of Queenston and they launched a counterattack, as a result of which they managed not only to drive the Americans from the occupied heights, but also to force them to capitulate. Special mention deserves the fact that on the American bank of the river there was a detachment of militia, which was supposed to come to the aid of their compatriots, but he refused to go on the attack. Meanwhile, another American detachment under the command of Henry Dearborn began to move towards the Canadian border, but he could not invade enemy territory. The fact is that the detachment consisted mainly of militias, among whom unrest began, so Dearborn was forced to abandon the continuation of the attack and return to the vicinity of Plattsburgh. At the beginning of 1813, the American government managed to raise an army of 40,000 soldiers, which was planned to be used for a decisive offensive. The American army launched an attack at the beginning of the year, but already on January 22, its vanguard was defeated at the Battle of Frenchtown. Despite the losses suffered, the American command did not abandon its plans. On April 27, 1813, an American detachment under the command of General Dearborn invaded enemy territory and captured the main city of Upper Canada, York. In this city there were large military and food warehouses, which the American army plundered. The command of the U.S. Army was well aware that due to the fact that the British flotilla controlled Lake Erie, it was impossible to successfully operate in this area. That is why it was decided to concentrate efforts on creating their own flotilla. All work was completed by early autumn, and on September 10, a battle took place between the British and American flotilla for control of Lake Erie. The victory in this battle was won by the Americans, and the British, having lost control of Lake Erie, were forced to leave Detroit and Fort Malden, as the American army had the opportunity to land in the rear and cut the supply lines. During a retreat near Moravian Town, British troops under the command of Henry Proctor were attacked by an American army under the command of William Garrison. The British were defeated, and the Indian leader Tecumseh was killed in battle, because of which the British army lost the support of many Indian tribes. Nevertheless, the British were able to gather strength and launch a counteroffensive. British detachments under the command of General Prevost were able not only to oust American troops from Canadian territory, but also on December 24 to establish control over Fort Niagara, thereby opening their way into the depths of U.S. territory. In 1814, in response to the destruction of York, the British command planned a strike in the heart of the United States, the city of Washington. Since by this time the war with Napoleonic France had ended, the British managed to transfer part of the liberated forces to the American continent. The Americans also did not waste time in vain in the summer of 1814, a detachment of General Brown, numbering about 3.5 thousand soldiers, launched an offensive and captured Fort Erie. Planning to develop success, the Americans continued the offensive. Near the city of Chippewa, on July 5, American troops clashed with a detachment of General Rial, numbering about 2,000 soldiers. A bloody battle broke out during which the victory was on the side of the U.S. Army, and the remnants of the British detachment were forced to hastily retreat to Queenston. Some time later, the British received reinforcements and launched a counterattack. A new battle took place on July 25th near Lundy's Lane. Despite the fact that the British had the advantage in numbers, the battle did not reveal a clear winner, as both sides remained on the battlefield. Nevertheless, Brown made the decision to retreat to Fort Erie and take up the defensive. In turn, the British, having reached the outskirts of Fort Erie, tried to take it by storm on August 15. The attack was unsuccessful and on August 21 the British detachments retreated to the vicinity of Chippewa. Meanwhile, a British squadron with a landing force of 3,600 soldiers under the command of Admiral Coburn and General Ross entered the Potomac River. Having destroyed the American flotilla, the British pushed back the local militias on the evening of August 24 and captured the city of Washington. 
huge military booty, including about 200 guns, fell into the hands of the British. Having destroyed government buildings, the British decided to build on their success by continuing the offensive towards the city of Baltimore. On September 12, British detachments reached the outskirts of Baltimore, but faced fierce resistance from the American army. Having failed to break the resistance of the enemy, the British decided to retreat. Very soon, the British troops left the vicinity of Baltimore and Washington. At the same time, the British attack on Maine began. The British managed to occupy the northeastern part of the state, but due to the lack of forces and the resistance of the enemy, they could not continue the offensive deep into the United States. It should be mentioned that while the British troops were burning government buildings in Washington, in Belgium, in the city of Ghent, peace negotiations were in full swing, but as each side tried to bargain for more favorable peace terms, the negotiation process dragged on. In December 1814, British detachments with a total of about 14,000 soldiers under the command of General Pakenham landed in the vicinity of New Orleans, planning to capture the city. At this time, in New Orleans there was a garrison with a total number of about 5,000 soldiers under the command of General Jackson. To try to thwart the enemy's plans, the New Orleans garrison tried to make a sortie. On the evening of December 24, American detachments secretly approached the British camp and attacked it. Despite the effect of surprise, the attack of the American troops was repulsed, and they hastily retreated under the protection of the fortifications of New Orleans. The siege of the city began, which was accompanied by artillery duels. On January 8, 1815, General Pakenham, at the head of a detachment of 5,000 soldiers, launched an attack on the fortifications of New Orleans. This attack was unsuccessful. The British came under heavy shotgun fire from American artillery, their attack bogged down, and Pakenham himself was mortally wounded. The siege of New Orleans, despite the death of Pakenham, continued, but on February 4 it was decided to stop the siege work, after which the British troops left the outskirts of the city. On February 17, 1815, a peace treaty was signed under the terms of which both sides undertook to withdraw their troops from the territories occupied during the hostilities. This ended the war. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so as not to miss new videos.